really exciting to see the pieces come together. The team is on a great glide path for our landing on May 17th, 2018. The exhibit is coming along very, very well. We've had uh, some of the sections, the designs are approved, fabrication is going on, and what's really remarkable to see these pieces, it's almost like a puzzle where you start adding uh, one piece and then another piece and you begin to see what it's gonna look like. That's the stage that we're at now. There's some really great progress, some exciting things with the exhibit, some elements that we've never had before in the museum, so, and that's appropriate for something as significant as the Memphis Bell. And then on the restoration side, uh, we have such brilliant staff in restoration and they are so careful about how they're doing their work, their attention to detail, and with the painting of the aircraft in process, we're seeing the same kind of picture. The, the Memphis Bell has always been here since 2005 in restoration, and it was completely stripped. And uh, we knew it was the Memphis Bell, but uh, a bare metal B-17, you know, intellectually we knew it was the Memphis Bell, but it's kind of hard to see it. It's at a point now where it is looking like the Memphis Bell. Enough of the paint has been put on the aircraft and some of the markings that it indeed looks like the Memphis Bell, and I think that's really exciting for the whole team to see it coming together. Now, as far as painting the Memphis Bell, um, there are really only two options. So in the 1980s, the Memphis Bell went through restoration work in Memphis, and at that time, all of the original paint, markings, nose art was completely stripped off the aircraft, and then they repainted it to appear as it did while the Memphis Bell was on the war bond tour. When the aircraft came to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in 2005, we elected to strip all of that restoration paint off, uh, partly so that our restoration staff could fully assess any corrosion issues that were on the aircraft. Um, they also did the same thing to the interior, again, uh, to assess the corrosion. So we really only had two good options about how the Memphis Bell would be painted either as it appeared about or shortly after the 25th mission, so this would be in mid to late May 1943, or how it appeared in June and the following months when it was on the war bond tour. And there really are some significant differences in the markings between the two. Now in the uh, public mind, the common perception of the Memphis Bell is how it appeared when it was on the war bond tour. So there are a lot of extra markings on the aircraft, and that includes a row of swastikas underneath the yellow bombs on the nose. There are crew names in several of the positions. There's a list of missions on the left-hand side of the tail, and a lot of other extra markings. And in addition to these extra markings, there are also hundreds, if not thousands, of individual names that were drawn on in crayon, marker, and in some cases, they were actually carved into the skin of the aircraft. So this is an important part of the history of the Memphis Bell. In the case of the appearance of the Memphis Bell in mid-May, mid to late May 1943, that's how the aircraft appeared when it was still in the 91st Bomb Group and it was still a combat aircraft. And so actually a lot of these markings that we're used to seeing in, in artwork, illustrations, models, and in photos, because of course there were a lot of photos taken on the War Bond Tour, that's really our perception of how the Memphis Bell looked. So in looking at which of the two options we wanted to take, some of our considerations were things like, can we make it accurate? Can we accurately represent it, the aircraft to a day or to a week? Because we want to pick a point in time. We don't want to have a combination of markings from May and July and different time periods because that didn't exist. So that was one consideration. Another consideration was, what is the most important time period for this object? Um, and in the end, we decided to go with the markings as it appeared shortly after the crew finished their 25th mission. And those considerations um, of accuracy and importance to the object were, were really primary in our decision. One of our sources of information, which has been truly remarkable, is the Memphis Bell movie outtakes. And in the more than 60 restorations I've personally worked on, I have never had access to this kind of visual evidence of an aircraft. It's truly remarkable. And these outtakes were the clippings from the Memphis Bell movie in 1944. William Wyler and his team of cameramen shot 
11 and a half hours of footage and only used 40 minutes of it for the wartime movie. And they did it at risk of their lives. In fact, one of the cameramen was killed on a filming mission. But what they have left us and which the National Archives preserved and from which we have a copy is this visual record of the Memphis Bell, how it appeared early, as early as January of 1943, just a few months into its, its tour, all the way up to and past the completion of the 25th mission into July and August of 1943 on the war bond tour. So we have an outstanding record of, of how the aircraft look. And the Memphis Bell, from May 17th till late May, the only markings that were added on were to complete the row of bombs so that it had 25 bombs. We know this for a fact because there's extensive coverage of the Memphis Bell during the King and Queen's visit on the 26th of May, 1943. So about a week and a half after the crew finished their 25th mission. And there's excellent coverage in color of the entire aircraft. And we, so we know for a fact that the uh, markings were fairly sparse uh, into late May. Um, some of the markings that are on the aircraft as of mid to late May include the words Memphis Bell. They include the famous nose art a row of 25 bombs representing each of the missions and there are some yellow and red stars above the bombs and those represent times when the bell was a lead in the formation of, uh, of the attack. There are also some swastikas around the aircraft. There's one at Leighton's position on the left, uh, the navigator. There's one at Quinlan's position in the tail and these swastikas rep represent confirmed victories. And we know that because we've gone down to the National Archives and looked through the combat records of the 91st Bomb Group. And we've looked at the actual confirmed victories that the gunners claimed. Now, there were some other claims that were stamped probable um, or damaged. Um, but these swastikas that were on the aircraft when it was flying in combat and shortly after represent confirmed victories. Um, there's also the name Irene underneath the, the uh, window of the radio operator Hansen, the name Virginia on the right hand side where the waist position is. So there, there are some very interesting markings on the Memphis Bell and the most important ones, the nose art, the name Memphis Bell, the bombs and so on and so forth were on the aircraft. The publicity markings as we've come to call them came in very late May or early June, and it was about the time that the Memphis Bell was transferred out of the 91st Bomb Group. And, and then it really became a publicity effort for the war bond tour. So when we look at the publicity markings, that's a very important part of the history of the aircraft. And that's something we wanna make sure that the public is aware of. But when we look at how are we going to represent the artifact, what is the most important time period and how are we able to make it accurate? So another example of the level of detail that our restoration staff is going to is the insignia on the left-hand side of the fuselage. And they noticed that the national insignia on the left-hand side of the fuselage is crooked. And when you look at it closely and you count rivets, it's very clearly crooked. I hadn't noticed it myself, but one of the restoration staff members pointed that out and said, you know, that insignia is crooked. And by golly, it is. You can clearly see it in the film. So that is replicated on the Memphis Bell. So some of those little details, uh, some of the swastikas that were painted on the aircraft were not symmetrical. In fact, they were ra rather crudely painted on. That will be replicated. So there'll be a lot of little details that might not be immediately noticeable, but those will be on the aircraft when it's finished. Trying to match olive drab, there's something about that particular color that's very, very difficult to get to uh, a precise measurement. And uh, I can assure you that the restoration staff, myself, the company that's working, uh, and uh, other members in the research division, uh, we've, we've spent countless hours trying to get those shades correct. And we're all very, very pleased with the result that we have. And this, this is a national treasure. We need to make sure that it is accurate and that it appears as it did. Very clearly stated, the Memphis Bell was not the first heavy bomber to finish 25 missions, period. There were actually a handful of aircraft that finished 25 combat missions before the Bell did. What's important about the Bell is that it is the symbol of these heavy bomber crews. Now, the Memphis Bell was 
a first. It was the first heavy bomber to return to the U.S. after flying 25 missions over Europe. That is a factual statement. It was not the first heavy bomber to finish 25 missions. And our exhibit will highlight those three aircraft that did this before the Memphis Bell did. We want the full story to be told. Probably the most significant date with the Memphis Bell is May 17, 1943. And that was the day that the crew finished their 25th mission. Now there is a caveat to that. That 25th mission for the crew is actually the 24th mission for the aircraft. And the Memphis Bell flew two days later on May 19, 1943 with an entirely different crew. So there's a caveat to the May 17th date. But, but the May 17th date is what was celebrated by the War Department. It was in all the literature. And uh, it's for that reason that we are going to have the rollout of the Memphis Bell on May 17, 2018, 75 years to the day that the crew finished their 25th mission.